Hello, welcome back to Jimbo's PC Builds. Today it's time to start season two of the Cooler League. <laughs> So, as I mentioned at the end of Season 1, um, I've upgraded my test bench, which is going to kick off Season 2. Now, within, with the first episode of the season, this is going to go on a bit longer uh, than the normal episodes, purely because, one, I'm going to be looking at the new cooler I'm adding to the league, but two, I'm also bringing back some coolers from Season 1 to make sure that we've got a good test base for Season 2. So first of all, I'm going to bring up the cooler and show you the cooler that we're going to start off with for Season 2. And that cooler is the Thermaltake Tough Air 710. Now with moving up to um, an i9, I had to be a little bit ruthless in terms of the coolers I was going to keep from Season 1. Because some of the coolers from Season 1 were one fan coolers, which aren't really going to cut it with, uh, you know, a... a an i9 12900K, they're basically going to struggle, they're going to thermal throttle. So you'll notice I brought back AIOs and two fan coolers. So without further ado, let's have a look at the coolers that I'm bringing back. So these are the, all of the coolers that I'm bringing back from Season 1. The Deep Cool Assassin 4, the Cooler Master MA824 Stealth, the Thermalright Peerless Assassin 120, the Thermalrite Phantom Spirit 120, which was the champion from Season 1, so it'll be interesting to see how that does. The Deep Cool AK620. The Ulsi M120D. And finally, the Thermalrite Frozen Note 360. So they're the coolers we're going to um, retest. So that's the coolers we're going to go through. So next, I'm going to do as I normally do. I'm going to walk you through the install briefly of the uh, Thermaltake Tough Air 710. I'll give you my thoughts on the, on the install. And then once we've done that, we'll move on to the scores and some surprise new elements with the scores, and etc. And then once I've gone through the scores, we'll go and do my final conclusion. All right, so without further ado, let's have a look at the install and I'll give my thoughts afterwards. So install wise, it's actually very similar to a lot of um, other coolers. Um, what I was worried about, and you'll see in the video, I'll put like a box of old memory underneath 
because on my test bench there's a hole that goes down to the power supply because you had to have a back plate which you put four pins through. Now I was worried about those pins falling through. As it turns out, when you stick them in the back plate, they actually stay, so I didn't have that problem. Then you put some spacers on and you put the old bar across, you screw those down and then you put the cooler on and tighten it up. Um, I have to say that it did, it did a really good job of tightening up. I was worried because of the little plastic bits. I thought they'd be a little bit tacky, but they weren't. They worked really well. Um, yet I thought it was pretty easy to install. Um, the fact that those prongs managed to stay with the back plate were good. So I would say as compared to the rest of the coolers, it's pretty much in the middle of the pack install wise. It wasn't the most difficult, but it wasn't the hardest either. All right, so with that, Let's have a look at all of the scores and how well it did compared to all the other coolers. And I'll go through the results from all the other coolers as well to give you an idea of how they stack up against the Tough Air 710. All right, on with the scores. Oh, before we get on to the scores, a final thought. I've changed the Cinebench this time. I've also, with Season 2, moved to a different version, the latest version of Cinebench. And instead of doing an average of several runs, I'm actually doing one run, which is the throttling test for 10 minutes um, of uh, the latest version of Cinebench. And that's the multi-core test rather than the single core test to make sure I'm fully hitting the CPU hard. It's worth mentioning as well that with every cooler I test or retest, I install them, then I run Cinebench several times over a few days to make sure that you get full burning of the actual thermal paste. So that's what I use for the test. So, okay, that's a little note on the testing. Let's get to those results. Base temps, again, as we did in season one, we're including base temperatures in there. The Thermal Take Tough Air 710 did reasonably well on this with a base temp of 18 degrees Celsius, which is equal to everything else. Base temp is just an indication of how on uh, the standard fan curve that the coolers are doing. You can see that most of them are in a similar line. The only exceptions really are the Thermalrite Frozen Note 360 RGB and the Ulsi M120D. Base sound, this is an indication of how much the fans are having to work on each cooler to maintain the temperature we saw on the last slide as base temps. The higher the value, the more it's the more they're having to work to maintain that temperature we saw. So, if for instance, you can see you're here with the thermal tape Tough Air 710, it, the decibels were 34.3, so it wasn't having to work that hard to keep maintain that lower temperature. Whereas, if you look at the LCI M120D, yeah, it was having to work a little bit more to maintain that not so great base temperatures. So, while these don't really contribute to much, these are an indication of you know what based on the idleness of the CPU. If it's having to work a little bit uh, idle, then obviously we're going to see a situation where it starts to work, the cooler is going to struggle. Cinebench score. Um, the other two statistics have gone through so far are the same as in season one. In the season two, I'm changing the way I'm testing the Cinebench score. Basically, in this season, um, I'm doing a 10 minute throttle test rather than doing an average of several shorter tests. Basically, the 10 minute run gives us a better idea of like a reasonable stress test rather than just doing three tests that can be you know, to be perfectly honest, or even more than three tests, if you do like four or five, the circumstances can be that the, the cooler can never really get to its full peak because it doesn't run for long enough. So on this, you can see that the Thermalrite uh, Phantom Spirit 120 is ahead quite a bit of the of everything else. Um, I did retest this, and the result I got was consistent. Because when I first saw it, I thought it was exceedingly high. Didn't trust it, went back and retested it and got the same result. All the rest of them seem to be in the similar bracket. Um, I don't know how reliable that, even though I've retested, I've still got some qualms about that 120 result, but the rest seem to be in a similar bracket. The Thermal Take Tough Air 710 finished in the middle of the pack with a score of 27,359. It puts it fifth. You can see here a trend the Thermal Right Frozen Note 360 and the LCI M120D. Oh, no, their scores aren't so great. That gives us an indication of what's going to be coming later. The rest of them all seem to be in a similar pack. Max temps. So this is when the test was running, the max temperature we saw from each of the coolers. And you can see already the LCI M120D throttled because it hit 100C. The Deep Cool Assassin 4 managed to avoid that just, um, which is why it didn't maintain clocks as high as some of the other coolers. Same with the Frozen Notes, that's why the, the scores weren't as great. 
The Thermaltake Tough Air 710 managed to maintain a max temp of 80, which is pretty reasonable considering that the, you know, the 12, the 12900K I'm testing on now is quite a warm beast. Um, but you can see the, the Cooler Master MA824 Stealth Wow, did it keep the CPU cool. The max temp it went to was 72 Celsius. Now, you're going to see in the conclusion with that cooler that um, that it's a little bit more expensive and that kind of impacts the the value the, the proposition of this cooler from a score point of view, etc, etc. But from a pure cooling capacity point of view, you can see it's pretty hard to beat. And not just that, the Cooler Master MA Out24 Stealth was the quietest, the quietest of them for that max temperature, which tends to tell me that it's got a lot of cooling capacity left. The Thermal Take Tough Air 710 finished middle of the pack. It didn't really get that loud. It got to 52 decibels, but when you compare that to the 44 decibels of the MA824 Stealth, you can see how much better that is than the rest of them and you know some of the other coolers basically the also m120d didn't get that high purely because the fans had hit their capacity so they weren't able to go any louder the deep cool assassin 4 was a bit of a surprise both in terms of temperatures and um the base the max sound because you know it's been well reviewed by other um uh, other YouTubers, but I've also got. I also went back and retested that. I made sure it was mounted correctly, etc., etc. And yeah, that's the result I got. So I don't know if the the version I've got is not great. I've got a dud sample. I don't know, um, but it didn't do very well. The scoring changes are pretty much the same for season one, except for the scores, because we've been at a ten minute throttle test. The ranges have changed, so you can see to get one point, you've got to get less than twenty five thousand five hundred, and to get seven points, you've got to have greater than twenty eight thousand. So that gives you an idea of what the scoring wages are now. In terms of the league table, here we are. After the first week, uh, first video of the Season 2, you can see that the Phantom Spirit 120 is top of the pile. A lot of that is down to two things, the score and also the price, because, you know, it's so, 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 so cheap. At $35, this thing can't be beat. So, you know, the cooling capacity, the scores and everything else, it's just a great cooler, so it's no surprise it's top of the pile. You can see that based just on cooling capacity that the Cooler Master MA824 Stealth are streaked into second, which again, based off the average max temp and max sound, isn't a surprise. It's a great cooler. But what I've done this time with the table that I've done differently than before, I've basically grouped um, the coolers. Anything that gets 25 or above is highlighted in green, and I'm saying it's a great cooler and should be considered for purchase. Anything in yellow is a decent cooler, Maybe not consider it for the top end CPUs, although even if you do use it for them, they've obviously not throttled, so they should be okay. But they'll be absolutely fantastic for the likes of i5s and i7s. The ones in red, yeah, they're the coolers that you want to avoid. Um, so you can see in this case that the two coolers down there are the Deep Cooler Assassin 4 and also I'm on 120D. Now, this is where I used to end the, the slides, uh, etc. at this point in season one. What I'm doing in season two is a little more analysis. So let's get on to the cooler analysis. So here we are at the cooler analysis slide. So what I'm doing here is I'm trying to break down not just the score, but a value proposition of the, of the coolers. So you can see that the coolers are in the same order that they were in the table. But what I've done is I've included the number of fans because that's something you need to keep in mind. If it's a one fan cooler and is in, say, the middle middle pack in, in the amber, then you know, even though it's a one fan cooler, it performs exceptionally well. So that gives you an indication. Then I've got the price, how much each of the coolers costs. Then what I've done is on the score that we have on the previous table, price does have an impact on that. So I've taken that out of the score to give you kind of like a... Uh, ease of install, design, and performance score. Um, and that's that number there. So you can see that actually, the firm, once you take price off the table, the Phantom Spirit 120 and the M8824 Stealth are actually equal on points, which is very interesting. So that's something to keep in mind. 
Then what I've done is I've taken per, cost per point, so I've divided the cost by the number of points. And you can see that the Phantom Spirit then is exceedingly good value because it only costs a dollar and fifty two cents per point. Whereas the MA824 Stealth costs four dollars thirty five. That's the investment in a in a uh, a much more expensive cooler, but as we saw in the previous slide, it's got a larger cooling capacity, and etc., etc., and go down to the list. And then you go to the guys at the bottom of the pile where you're talking, even though it's not that expensive, it's six and five dollars per point. Oh boy, it's still a lot more expensive than a lot of the other coolers. Then, next to the last column, I've got max temp. So, these are the temperatures we saw during the test. And then, what I've done is I've effectively subtracted from 100 degrees which is where the cooler would throttle the number of the difference between the max temp achieved and 100 basically to give you an idea of saying I'm I'm paying how much am I paying to basically keep the CPU that little bit cooler so you can see that the Phantom Spirit 120 I'm only paying a dollar 59 to get it down to 78 and this is where the the value and the cooling capacity comes in of the M8824 stealth because it's only costing $3.57 to keep the cool, to keep the CPU a lot cooler at 72 degrees, whereas if you compare, say, to the thermal take tough air 710, which only achieved 80 degrees, it's uh, it's cheaper than the the M824 Stealth, but because its temperature was higher, it costs a lot more per degree over 100. So this kind of is showing you the the value in proposition in terms of investing for cooling capacity. So hopefully with this additional sl slide it's giving you a lot more to chew on rather than just saying which is the top cooler. All right, I hope I've given you a lot of information there. Now I'm going to get on to my conclusion where I'll basically give you my final thoughts thoughts on the Thermaltake Tough Air 710. So my final conclusion on the Tough Air 710. I've already given you a lot of information during the slides etc about the cooler. But, um, as I mentioned earlier, the install was pretty middle of the pack, it was pretty decent, and as a cooler, it performed okay. I would say that was the best way I could put it. It didn't compete at the top end with the likes of the M824 Stealth, it, but it did okay. It was a little bit on the loud side, and it kept the temperatures reasonable, it didn't, you know, it didn't get anywhere near 100. Um, so it did well, and I hope you saw from the analysis slide of where it sat from an investment point of view. So, the cooler wise, do I think you should go out and buy this? Uh, I think there's other coolers I've tested, like the, 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 the Phantom Spirit, and the likes of the M824 Stealth, which I think do better, and I think they might be a wiser investment. But if you do buy this cooler, it won't let you down. Alright, I hope you found this uh, video, longer video, helpful. I hope you found the information useful for either investing in any of the coolers or the one I've covered today. If you've bought this cooler and you've got any questions, leave them in the comments section down below. If you've got any further tests or any coolers that you want me to test, also throw that in the comments down below. Don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell icon because my cadence of videos is about one a month, so I'm not exactly what you call erratic, so ringing the bell will make sure you get notified when the new video comes out. Um, yeah, oh, and don't forget to like the video as well. The more likes, the better. It will increase the uh, um, the visibility on all the algorithm for YouTube. And that's all of that kind of stuff. Again, I hope you found the video useful. And as always, take care.